Hello. Hola. <laughs> it is nice to see you again. So yeah, thank you for this for this uh, accepting this invitation. I would like you to to present also Juan Alberto Gaviria. John, great to see you too, and thank you so much for for uh, attending our call of interviewing these wonderful people that have had the Medellin experience and also how how wonderful you taught us and we learned from your work. All right, well, um, thank you for having me. Uh, and um, I'll be absolutely honest when I say that Medellin is very, very close to, to my heart. Uh, I, I've made some, you know, wonderful friends there. Uh, you know, including both of you, but I still stay in touch with a number of people from those things. So it's, it's been a real high point of my life, high point of my career as a photographer. And I'm, I'm forever grateful for the opportunity to, uh, that you had invited me down there because it was, uh, it was both a great experience. It was a great cultural experience as well. I uh, started photography um, quite young. I uh, imagine I was seven or eight years old. Uh, and uh, what got me into photography was actually the um, um, early um, manned space program here in the United States. I was, I was fascinated by science and uh, just absolutely taken by, you know, the, the, this great adventure of, of humans leaving the face of the earth and going on some uh, great exploration of, of, uh, of the unknown. So as a child, as a little kid, it was inspiring. Um, obviously life came full circle later in my photography career with my, my book on the uh, the space shuttle uh, program, but that's actually what got me into photography. Um, I um, was like glued to Life magazine. Uh, if you're familiar with Life, uh, that had some great photojournalists. So as a kid, if I couldn't watch it on TV, I would I would like just spend hours looking at the pictures. So I made a promise to myself and I used to always tell my students years later that your first roll of film, don't be emotionally involved with it because you got to learn how to load the film on the reel and, and process the, uh, the film properly before you want to commit to. So that was a, a lesson I learned early on, but um, so that's how I got into photography and I just became fascinated by it uh, and I built a dark room in my, my parents' house. Uh, I even uh, experimented with color processing because I, I used to look at US camera or something, something like that. And I read an article where you could take these five gallon kits of color processing chemicals and break them down so you into small like you can mix up a half a gallon or or you know maybe two ounces and so i was sitting in my mom's kitchen table with measuring cups with all this chemistry breaking them down into these small packages it took forever to do it i i processed one roll of color film it was I couldn't print it. I, I processed the film. The negatives came out okay, but it was just, it was too much work. But I think it was part of my, my love of, of science because it was chemistry. And, uh, but when I uh, graduated from high school, I would just fell, I worked at a camera store. And so I was just kind of consumed by photography. Uh, graduated from high school and everybody said, what are you going to do with your life now? You know, you're done with school. What are you going to do with your life? And heck, I was just having to be done with school. I didn't, I didn't, uh, 
I just wanted to enjoy life. And uh, I, I just to, to literally to quiet them, I said, I'm going to be a photographer uh, because that's what I love to do. Uh, eventually, I went to college, got my degree in photography uh, there in a fine art program. Yeah, yes. And, and then then you took some like a workshop or something with uh, Ansel Adams. So, yes. You know, so you went there to his lab and yep. uh, amazing. It, it must have been like when you, you say that you saw that developing the, the way he developed that. It, it must have been like magic seeing the details and the, the, the yep. you know, it was it must have been amazing. Uh, I understand that you also had uh, some friends that some of them exhibited here. I, I believe uh, Linda Troller, right? Was she? Yeah, Linda. I met Linda at an Ansel Adams workshop. The University of Antioquia. It's uh, developing uh, a specialization yeah. in analogous mm -hmm. thing. It's, it's very important to hear that mm -hmm. now that you know young generations are, are interested in. in that. Well, they have a, a, a program on, on research. It's a, I don't know if it's a master program, but it's, a, it's, it's more, more like a, a research group or research team. And they are trying to, yeah, to, to experiment a lot on, on older, older uh, technologies. Exciting how to see, we, we were talking a lot about magic. The magic happens and the image appears on the surface. I always think that's good to that universities offer those kind of courses because I think it's good for a contemporary photographer who's only been ex uh, that use the digital medium in their um, um, their pursuit of photography, but to have uh, some experience with the roots of photography and where, where photography came from. When I was a university professor, I loved teaching uh, both basic photography, basic film photography and digital photography because it gave me an opportunity to build the bridge between the new technology and how that new technology was developed from an understanding of the, the previous technology. The uh, other chapter of your life is the publishing of a book, which was also, when I was curator at the gallery, it was very daring for me also, you know, we went into more like uh, artistic photography, but then these wonderful photographs of the uh, blending of the, of the of the challenger, the, the, the rockets. How did you end it up? And of course, if, with your research in mind, you, I can understand that NASA pick up on you. Please tell us how did you get involved in that? I, yeah, I basically, that's how I got into photography was my fascination with, uh, with, with space travel. Yes. Of course, uh, I kept close uh, monitoring of it as I got older and went through through uh, uh, school and graduated from from high school. As a matter of fact, uh, the summer I graduated from high school, I flew down to um, uh, Cape Cape Canaveral to see an Apollo launch. I didn't know what I was doing. I just wanted to see it. I just got on a plane, flew to Orlando, uh, and uh, did, didn't know where to go from there. Uh, took a, a shuttle to Titusville uh, and to the Space Center. And uh, I'm, I didn't have a car or anything. So I walked out to the NASA Causeway and I'm hitchhiking. And this guy picks me up. He says, you can't be hitchhiking here. This is government property. He pick, picked me up, uh, took me into Titusville, said, this is a great place to watch the, the Saturn go up. Uh, so I watched the Saturn take off uh, right out of high school. Uh, forget, I think it was Apollo 17 or something like that. Uh, Apollo 15. And so in college, uh, I was studying photographer and studied photo history. Uh, a lot of it was documentary 
type photography. I mean, like the kind of stuff that uh, I used to look at in Life magazine. Uh, but I was also introduced to a lot of artists and, uh, and, you know, of course, Ansel Adams and his majestic landscapes. So when I graduated from college, it was right when the space shuttle started flying. So I still had that in my head of, um, you know, documentary photography, but I wanted to do a, an elevated documentary. I didn't want to do the journalistic in that sense. I wanted to be, exactly. I wanted to portray uh, the space program like Ansel Adams portrayed the national parks, you know, that, that they, they were this, these huge majestic pictures that inspired people. And uh, so I really had to learn, relearn everything, re, uh, you know, purchase new camera equipment. Uh, I eventually went with Hasselblad because it was the biggest format I could use effectively uh, to get, you know, pictures that had the kind of quality I was looking for that you get with view cameras. So I literally relearned everything. It was like starting over, but I was so driven to do it that I, I just, it was like problem solving, you know? Now, one thing that uh, you, in our talks, that you develop like a whole system of like different cameras in, in, the, in the landing field yep. and that will be, you know, clicking on uh, as the Challenger was landing, you know, technically, you know, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, well, um, that was one of those things that it demanded uh to design equipment to be able to get the pictures um because you know a sure i could get a long telephoto lens but but as any photographer knows shooting through three miles of atmosphere th there that atmosphere acts like a, a filter and uh you know you don't get these sharp crisp pictures because you just have so much and and the atmosphere varied you know uh especially in florida because of the kind of weather uh so if you shot long pictures you either had like heat waves in them or they were soft because of the humidity that was in the air so the only way you could get sharp pictures was to be close to the subject and when i mean close i mean a thousand feet away well so I designed uh, protective housings for my, my cameras. I designed a trigger that could listen to the sound of the rocket and start the cameras running. Um, Amazing. And we developed, we did like three versions of the trigger till we uh, settled on a final, uh, um, a final um, version. Um, and uh, it was, um, it just, again, it was problem solving, you know? It's something I learned from Dr. Land who invented the Polaroid system. He says, you can define the problem, you can solve it. And I always had that in the, and, you know, so I defined the problem. This was the problem I needed to be close to the shuttle. I needed a device that could, uh, could uh, trigger the cameras uh, and needed something that was reliable. And so I invented these camera triggers and some of those photos in the book of the close up of the, the rocket was uh, um, with a remote camera. So it was, it took, it took a couple of years just to get to the point that I probably had pictures that I thought were were the ones I was looking for. And you finally published a book. Yeah, I, uh, after tw 25 years, uh, I published a book. This, yes, I did. I published a book after, uh, after uh, 20 some years uh, that I started working down there. Uh, the book is, is called First Fleet, NASA Space Shuttle Program from 1981 
1986. Okay, I'm going to read this paragraph in the uh, um, in in the acknowledgments of the book. Uh, the negatives for this project were kept in storage for over 25 years, and if it weren't for a trip to Medellin, Colombia in 2013 to participate in Zoom Lab One, this book might never have become a reality. It was there that the seed was planted to finish this project. I will always be indebted to what has become known as the Colombian Board of Directors, whose members encouraged me to finish this project for, uh, for their support and encouragement. Thank you to fellow board members, Juan Alberto Guerrero. I, yeah. Your name is a little long. <laughs> I, I went to PhotoFest with Juan and I met you and I met so many other fantastic photographers. And it was really fantastic. And that's why I invite you to, to be part of the of one of the Zoom Labs, in this case, what's sub objective. Uh, on this view on the city, and if you, you were presenting these images of the wall, could you explain that, how, how does it work? Yeah, I guess um, that's probably kind of tied in with the shuttle stuff where I, I use technology to um, get the pictures. Uh, one little sidebar is I use the original Apple Macintosh computer to design my camera triggers. And uh, so that was the first thing where I was mixing computer technology in with, um, with uh, you know, my, my photography. It eventually evolved into using, uh, you know, Photoshop to, to replace the dark room. Um, and to, to get back to what I said earlier about being influenced by artists and uh, outside of photography, like abstract expressionists. Uh, so my later work involved um, shooting walls. And people go, so why are you shooting walls? Well, uh, one day I had an experience that I was standing in front of a Pollock in the Museum of uh, modern art and from across the room the the painting kind of spoke to me but as I got closer and closer to it it kept speaking louder and louder and before I knew it I'm like right up on the surface of the canvas and I'm looking at all the minute details that his technique is of dribbling and um, I saw oh I don't know a cigarette butt or something embedded in all that paint and I'm going Oh my God, what an experience this is. And I left there going, could I do that with photography? On the scale of painting, sure. You can get photos so big that has that kind. But I wanted big things that had that same impact. So I used this thing on a wall where I would shoot four frames up and uh, four frames across, I think is what the proportions worked out to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, it, I developed a way of like looking at this wall because I found myself standing in front of walls having the same kind of experience I had in the museum. It is like uh, uh, what uh, Alfredo Jaar, the, the, the Chilean artist, he said, uh, you don't take a picture, you make a picture. You, yeah. you, you make a, a photo. So it's, yeah, very interesting. Yeah, I think um, I used to, you know, thing is like photography is a mirror of society. So my work today is very different, very abstract. Um, that exhibition and what it was Zoom Lab 4, I think it was, or um, I, all the pictures in that exhibition were done. They were walls that I had done in Colombia. Uh, and uh they're urban landscapes yeah yeah and uh, what i found there is that walls have a very distinct 
culture all their own that were reflected in the materials of the place, like these bricks. I mean, talk about bricks, you know, in Colombia and, and all these red bricks and everything, but they're very unique shape, style that you don't see here in the States. So, so you know, the, the walls were always different in Colombia. Tell us about, you know, your experience that, and I, we want to thank you about the timing that it took, like we went to six or seven uh, schools all over the barrios of Medellin. Well, uh, it was it was exhausting, but exhilarating all at the same time because um, uh, we uh, would visit these schools uh, and sometimes we visited like four in a day. <laughs> um, but, you came here to work. <laughs> the, the thing is, is, you know, we might have seemed tired going in between each school, but I'll tell you, when we got in there with, with the kids and the energy uh, and their enthusiasm, uh, it was just, it was great. It was, um, you know, and that's what I mean by, you know, going, coming to Colombia was a cultural experience as well for me. Well, we, we want to thank you to uh, give, taking all that time because it's art and now this whole tendency of, you know, that art can also help to social transformation, which we all need it and especially with young generations and when they see a light through art uh, we are witness that it has changed their lives so yep. you know, thank you so much john for for that last you know this having given time of yourself to do this um social art transformation in those kids which many of them you know passed through the university they were transformed you know i keep Sometimes I meet them in in some commercial centers or something, and hey, one, you know, I'm yeah, here yeah. working. <laughs> Just life, can, you know, it, it makes sense their lives through art. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for uh, assisting to Artist Talks, uh, a program run by Colombo Americano and the Embassy of the United States. Mm -hmm.